I was able to at least to be honest with myself and say, man, it's, it's only six months. I was just desperate for anything else that I could do. I remember you reached out to me and it was something along the lines, like, I don't even care what you're doing. Like, I just want to yeah. work with you. If I can't sell a policy in the field, how am I going to sell it over the phone? Or how are they going to give me their banking? Or how are they going to give me their social? Let me try selling this kind of insurance instead, or let me get this license. And they just keep jumping from thing to thing to thing. It was pretty bad. I mean, <laughs> it was pretty bad. I think that's officially the last time you quit. Yeah, that right? was the that's last, the last time. time you yeah. quit. How did that happen? How did you transfer from being someone not successful in this business to being extremely successful on the phone? Welcome to my show of ordinary people doing extraordinary things, where we hear from regular people who got tired of living their ordinary lives who were not afraid to make that jump. You gotta be different. You can't be doing what everyone else is doing. You gotta create action. You gotta create momentum. So I'm looking for demand and I'm looking for mentorship because I wanted to know everything my mentor knew. People who are just like you and me. Hey, how you doing? It's David Price here. I'm in Miami, Florida with Dana Berlin. She is a telesales ninja selling final expense insurance, all 100% on the phone. And we're going to go over some, some different tips and tricks on how you can sell final expense insurance on the phone. Please subscribe to my channel. I'm going to be interviewing a lot of different gurus in this industry that are going to bring a lot of tools and knowledge to you to help you win in the final expense insurance industry. So Dana, first off, welcome to the, welcome to the show. Thank you. Happy to be here. So I want to give you some awards real fast that I owe you for, for uh, 2021. So first off, $222,303, all 100% on the phone. Thank you. Congratulations. Thank you. But even more impressive than that is your ability to teach other people how to sell on the phone, right? 999,922. So you're what seventy eight dollars from being a, a million dollar agency, and you did that all on the phone, teaching people how to sell insurance on the phone. So again, big congratulations! Thank you. That's crazy, seventy eight dollars. That's it. You missed it. It was one dentist appointment. Yeah. <laughs> one dentist appointment would have would have made you the the million dollar agency. But we'll put these over here for you. So, so again, you know, congratulations on that. I mean, there's so many people that want to sell insurance on the phone and, and I hear so many people say, oh, it's not possible or it's too hard or people don't like giving their bank account information on the phone. And every single day you, you prove them wrong, right? Every single day. I, I don't think, I think you basically write at least a policy one day, one, every day, right? Yeah. I mean, at least you, one a day. Yeah. At least one a day. Yeah. So that's pretty awesome. And, yeah. and, but it wasn't always like that, was it? Right. No. And I used to think the same thing. I used to think, well, like if I can't sell a policy in the field, how am I going to sell it over the phone? Or how are they going to give me their banking? Or how are they going to give me their social? And, I, you know, eventually I learned that it is simple. So the one thing I think that really separates you and, and makes you different, and, and I think that's really anyone that's having success in this industry, is the work, right? We, we get involved with something, and I think it's any entrepreneurial venture, Right. And we get excited about it, but then something happens and it's not as easy as we thought it was. And then it becomes work right now. It's not fun anymore. It's not this fun thought. And at that point, you know, people quit. Right. However, you show that you have a really good work ethic, you know, how, how you were just someone they could always count on. So wh where did that, that work ethic come from? Um, I guess it came from my family, my dad, you know, he was a hard worker, is a hard worker, you know, always went to work. Yeah, your dad, he's got his own car business, right? He, he sells cars, right? He, he's always trying to sell me a car. Right. So, yeah. so yeah, I could see he's, he's definitely a go-getter, yeah. you know, so, so maybe it's some of that. Yeah. So that's awesome. So, again, we're talking about, you know, but let's talk about before insurance, you know, you, you graduate high school. Like, what did you want to be when you grew up or what were your thoughts on an occupation? Right. So I was always, I guess I was kind of lost, you know, like as soon as I graduated high school, I went to college for a little while and I started working in retail and I got promoted to manager at, you know, several different retail stores. And I kind of just got stuck there. You know, I, I kind of thought that that was going to be the best 
I could ever do because I didn't graduate from college and I really didn't have a strong desire to go back to college or do anything. And I didn't really know what I wanted to do. So um, I kind of just, you know, I ended up in retail for years. How long were you in retail for? <laughs> 25 years 25 years yeah. that's stuck yeah yes. i was stuck that's i was stuck. definitely stuck so it's funny now that you say that because i remember you reached out to me and it was something along the lines like i don't even care what you're doing like i just want to yeah. work with you like <laughs> right. as long as it's not retail yeah. yeah so what what got you to that point where you just like I, I just need a change well i you know i became a mom she's five and then i quickly became a single mom and i was kind of forced to move in with my mom because retail wasn't enough money to pay the bills uh, or to live on my own in Miami in Miami right yeah. <laughs> so I knew that like if I wanted to have my own apartment and have you know a good home for my daughter I was gonna need to figure out something else and I also knew that I didn't want to be stuck in a mall like working holidays and working nights and I was just desperate for anything else that I could do was there anything else on the radar or? Nothing. I, I, mean, I was the radar. No, I mean, the, the alternative was go back to school and do something. And you didn't know what that something no. was? No. no. Okay. So so you reached out to me yeah. and I remember like you didn't need a lot of information. right? No, now. I didn't. So what was it that you seen? Because because you didn't need a lot of information from me, right? But but obviously you gained some information on your own. Like what is it that you seen that was enough information to, to ask for making the change? I mean, I, again, like, I think I was just desperate to do something else. And I had a relationship with you, so I trusted you. And when, you know, I saw some of your success on social media, you know, I just kind of. Here I am. Yeah, here I am. Got it. I love it. I love it. Yeah. And, and, and I remember because you, you told me you're interested in working with me and I just sent you the course. Like, yeah. Okay, get your license. Take I, this course. Yeah. I yeah. literally did every single thing you told me to do. You did. You sure did. And Not always, but in the beginning. <laughs> enough. Enough to get you here, right? Yeah. Enough to get you here. So, so you got your insurance license. And then do you remember that first day we went out in the field? Yeah, I do. Do, do you want to tell that story? Yeah. So, yeah, we went out in the field. And literally every single house that you went to, you got a check. And you closed every single sale or every single house. And I thought like, oh, this is easy. I could do this. <laughs> and, you know, it wasn't it like, of course, it wasn't that easy. Like you just had like, you know, it was a good luck day or whatnot. Yeah. Did, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, and I struggled, you know, then I went out by myself and I struggled for a long time. You know, I'm super shy, super reserved. And it was hard for me to knock on doors. It was hard, you know, to sit with a stranger. Um, so yeah, I mean, it wasn't, you know, it wasn't that easy. Yeah, I know he was definitely was definitely way out of your comfort zone. Yeah. And again, like, I remember every month we go to the meeting together and you show up with your fake smile on your face and, yeah. you know, and, and yeah. so like, what was it? Like, how did you keep going because that's where a lot of people, they miss it, right? Yeah. It's like, oh, wait right. a second. This isn't as easy as it looked. Let me uh, let me try selling this kind of insurance instead, or let me get this license. And they just keep jumping from thing to thing to thing. And every time they hit some kind of wall um, of adversity, they jump to the next thing. But you, you just, you stayed the course. Yeah. Um, I guess I just had like belief and seeing all the other people's success that were just like me. And I, you know, I, I just thought like, well, why not me? Why can't I do it? And then I also had, you know, in the back of my head, like my only other alternative is to go back to retail. And, you know, I wasn't willing to do that. And I also heard you and others say, you know, just give it a year, just give it a year. So in the back of my mind, I thought like, okay, I'll just give it a year. And, you know, and, and that's what I committed to. You know, I committed to a full year. That's good. I remember when my first six months in the business and, and again, you know, just like a lot of people, I started questioning what I was doing and right. I was able at least to be honest with myself and say, man, it's it's only six months. So I can't really say I gave it a chance. Yeah. Right. I don't think there's anything, you know, let, let me learn to play the guitar. But if I can't figure out in six months, it's not for me. Right. And yeah. I, I don't think that 
we hit the year point, and at that point, you're only sold in the field, right? I, I don't believe you've ever picked up the phone to, to attempt to sell insurance at that point. Is that correct? Correct, yes. All right. And that first year, how, what was it like? Um, it was pretty bad. I mean, <laughs> it was pretty bad. I mean, my whole family thought I was crazy. Like I was going out every single day, you know, not really making any money. I mean, not really making any money at all. Right. Uh, and I wanted to quit. I called you up, you know, almost every day, practically crying, telling you that, you know, I don't think this is for me. I, you know, I can't do this anymore. And you just kept motivating me, encouraging me. And I, you know, I just kept going. So do you remember what point we switched you? Because I remember what happened. I remember you called me up. I think it was the, the last time that you quit, I think. Yeah, it was it, it was like the final I remember straw. that. I remember you said, Dave, I can't do this anymore. I remember specifically, I went up to Port St. Lucie to okay. work leads up there. And you thought it was going to be easy. I thought it was going to be like, I got a hotel. Yeah, I remember. I got like all these leads. You're so excited. And I think the three days I was there, I sold like one policy. And I was like, okay, like, I can't do this. Like, this is it. I'm this done. for me. Yeah. And then, yeah, so you called me up. You're, you wanted to quit. And I offered you a job as my assistant, Yeah. right? Because yeah. you needed a job still. So, yeah. and, and I know that I needed to keep you close, yeah. right? I didn't really want you as my assistant, yeah. but I wasn't going to let you go to another job. Right. And at that point, that's when we decided to pivot to the phone. Right. Do, yeah. do, do you remember what your thought process was? Because I remember it was going to be, you're going to be my assistant and you're going to try to sell on the phone like one or two days a week. Right. Or something like yeah. some kind of hybrid, yeah. you know, again, just trying to keep you keep me on the path, yeah. keep, keep you moving <laughs> yeah. forward, right? Yeah. To get you where you need to be. Yeah. So what were your thoughts when, when I said, listen, you're going to sell on the phone after we preached that it was such a hard thing to do with selling the phone, right? right. We, didn't, we didn't have the phone experience no. at the time. I mean, I thought it was crazy. Like I, I was confused. I didn't know why you were like suggesting this, uh, I was scared. You know, again, I, I, I had already mentioned I was having so much trouble selling in the field. How am I going to sell over the phone? Right. But like you said, I, I didn't have another job job lined up. So, you know, I just kind of like threw my hands up. Okay, like let's give it a shot. That was it. That was. I think that's officially the last time you quit. Yeah, that right? was the that last, was the last time. time you yeah. quit. So your, I think it was your first day you actually sold your first policy on the phone, correct? It could have been, yeah, I think so. Any thoughts, relief, anything? No, I mean, it was just like, oh, like, you know, maybe I'm just better on the phone. People don't like the way I look in person. I, <laughs> no. I don't think that's it. <laughs> so I remember, I remember you called me up and you're like, Dave, I, I, I don't want to be your assistant anymore. I just want to sell on the phone. Right. And yeah. I was like, okay, yeah. perfect. I said, there you go. Yeah, this doesn't really make sense for me to. Be I assistant. agree with you 100. Yeah. All right. So now, now we got you on the phone. You just started on the phone after being in the field. Do you remember how long you were in the field for? Was it the full year? It was a full year. A full year. You're yeah. you're out in the field for a year, no success, right? So now now we have you on the phone. So, and obviously, right, doing over almost a million dollars in premium last year. You know, personally doing over two hundred thousand. Being a single mom, hiring agents, mentoring agents, training agents, right? Doing a little bit of everything. I mean, just really being, like I said, a telesales ninja in all these different aspects. So how did that happen? How did you transfer from being someone not successful in this business to being extremely successful on the phone? I think just time, you know, and like dedicating myself to, to learning how to sell on the phone. Like, you know, the first few months, Selling on the phone was tough, not as tough as being in the field for a year, but there was still like a learning curve. But uh, once I figured out what was working, what leads were better for me, you know, it just became easy. You know, now people are, you know, on some occasions calling me for insurance, you know, because I put in the work. I, you know, consistently, you know, work. I remember you told me that somebody actually, it was like a Sunday, you weren't planning on working. Maybe it was a holiday or maybe it was your daughter's birthday. Oh, I was, was on vacation. You're on vacation yeah. and you're like, Dave, I wasn't going to work today, but the person literally left their bank account information on my voicemail. Yeah. yeah. So, and I was like, I was like, what if I told you that was going to happen to you a year ago? Would you believe me? Yeah. No, never. You're like, I didn't believe anything you said, Dave. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so, so now, now you talk about leads, like how important, right? Cause there's gonna be a lot of new agents watching this. 
Um, and, and they're always trying to find their way and they're trying to figure out what tools they need. And, and they're, they're looking at a lot of different things and different people. Again, you're very successful. You help a lot of people be successful. How important are leads? Uh, super important. You know, I mean, I start, I work, I've worked every lead out there, Facebook, direct mail, um, online quote, outsource leads. And it's not to say that you can't sell them over the phone. Like that's what I started out doing. You know, I basically only worked Facebook. I was working Facebook and then sprinkling in some TV live transfers. And then I quickly realized that, wow, you know, almost every live transfer I take, I close. Um, so then eventually I just stopped all the other leads and only worked live transfers. And, you know, I think that's where a lot of my success came in. So I think, I think the live transfers definitely, but also too, I, I think the, the amount that you take, right? I think so many people, you know, think, oh, live transfers. Well, you know, I just need like one a day or something, or, or they look at like a, a budget. Right. right. Like, OK, how much should I spend a month on leads? Right. Or how much should I spend a week on leads? And, and I know, you know, from conversations we have, like you don't have a lead budget. No, I don't. Like I it's just, you want right. to get your hands on every single lead you can because you know that the more leads you talk to, the more profitable you. will be. Right. Right. Yeah. And that is the biggest problem with new agents. Like so when you're a new agent, you know, your closing ratio is not as high. And a new agent thinks, okay, I'm going to buy a few live transfers and like, you know, everything's going to be great. But when you're first starting out, you know, your closing ratio is not high. So you may have to buy, you know, double the amount that I have to buy to get a sale in the beginning. But can you still be profitable? Yes. Yes, right? Yeah, 100%. So the way I always explain it to my agents, like 10 live transfers is going to cost somewhere around $300. But the chances of you not closing one is really, really slim. And if you close one sale, you make back all your money plus. Absolutely. So, so she's talking about live transfers with Sea Life Insurance Company, right? You, right. you use the, the yeah. carrier branded um, leads. So, because I remember that in, in a lot of new agents, right? So leads is... Again, it's it's a big wall for people. People aren't used to really investing money to make money, right? right. People are used to you know going to work and, and being paid, right? right? The only thing that they invest is the gas they have to pay for for the week to get to work. And you know, there's a there's a shift at a certain point where you realize I just need to get my hands on every lead that I can, yeah. Versus I don't want to spend money on leads, right? Right. Yeah. So how did that shift take place, and 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 what happened there? Um, I mean. You know, just seeing that no matter what, like, you know, I, I never really had that much of an issue buying leads. And eventually I saw like, even if I bought a bunch of leads and I didn't close any, I would eventually, you know, it would some in some way come back to you, you know, maybe like a week from then I would hear from like back from three people. I told an agent this the other day, like they said, yeah, I got some leads. I didn't close them. I was like, you didn't close them yet. Yeah. Right? right. Those leads are still good. Right. right. It might be three months from now, six months, yeah. a year from now. Yeah. You know, a lot of times it has to do with t with timing. Yeah. And, you know, like there, there was a day, you know, again, like like you said, I usually close one lead, at least um, one sale a day, anywhere from one to five. But there was a day a few weeks ago where I bought 10 live transfers and I didn't close any. But the next day I bought five and I closed five. And then the next day. I had like three people call me back. So, I mean, it, you know, you just have to know that it's like a numbers game. Absolutely. Do you have a day that stands out in your head where you're like, oh my God, I'm a rock star today. Like, like the stars are aligned. Everyone I talk to big premiums. Do you have anything like that? Yeah. No. I mean, I remember one week I did like over 15,000, literally every single person I talked to was like, I want like the highest premium. How'd that feel? I felt like a rock star. <laughs> <I was laughs> you like, are a wow. rock star. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. That's exactly why yeah. I called. Yeah. So what's some advice you could, you could give to a new agent just getting started? One that, you know, maybe is looking to work on the phone. Uh, just don't give up. I mean, like, you know, I think everyone thinks there's like a magic answer, a magic lead, you know. But, you know, the key is just to go to work every day consistently, not give up. Um, you know, and plug into the system. 
Absolutely. Right. I mean, it doesn't matter who you're working with. There, there is right. a system. Yeah. I think definitely finding something where you could have a consistent lead flow. Right. Right. I mean, just yeah. imagine if your lead flow was like cut off. Yeah. Or you had to like fight and figure out how to get leads every week. Right. Do you think you would have the success you're no. having? No. Right. So, so lead flow is important. Yeah. So what about, you know, a lot of times people talk about, you know, they, they want to sell a bunch of different products. Right. And one thing I definitely want to highlight is that you only sell one product. You only do final expense. Right. How, how do you, are you happy with just selling one product? Does it ever make you think about, you know, maybe yeah. I need to sell mortgage protection or something else? No, and it's, I have people that reach out to me, you know, like whether or not uh, on Facebook or whatnot, and they'll say like, they're confused that I only sell one product. But for me, I mean, it's all I know and it works, you know, right. like I'm making money just focused on one thing. I don't have to learn, you know, 10 different carriers and you know how how you know their policies work um it just makes sense yeah i mean yeah. like i said i mean <laughs> just what what did we say it was uh 77 78 dollars shy of a million dollars in premium you right. know all all final expense right. all one carrier yeah so that that's that's pretty awesome so so dana what are what motivates you right what we're like where's your vision what are you thinking about the future like you know, because obviously, like, you can work a lot less than you do. Right. Right. Yeah. Obviously, you don't have to be helping as many agents as, as you do and, and help another mentor other agents and stuff. Like, what drives you to continue to keep doing better? Uh, my daughter, of course. You know, I mean, my goal, you know, earlier on was, you know, to move out of my mom's. You know, I wanted her to have her own room. I wanted her to... Um, I wanted to live close to my mom. My mom lives on the beach. And again, like I knew, you know, working in retail, I was never going to be able to afford an apartment on the beach. In Miami in a high rise, right? Yeah. Congratulations yeah. on that. That's a big one. So I told my like, I'm going to live with my mom until I can afford to live on the beach. So that was like, you know, what pushed me to just, you know, keep working and you know, right. and of course my daughter. I love your view. <laughs> yeah. I love you. I, I feel like I need to move to Miami yeah. now. So what what is your goal long term? Um, you know, to have a bigger agency and Do you have a number on that? How big you want your agency? Five million. Five million? Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Awesome. Awesome. Well, again, I mean it's it's been a pleasure, you know, working with you. It's it's always good to see somebody that you know, I would say if I could get every single person to do exactly what I tell them to do, right, th they'll all be successful. And it doesn't matter what their skill level is. It doesn't matter where they start. It just comes down to like the commitment, the, the trust, you know, so it's always good to see somebody. Obviously, I didn't want to see you struggle as long as long as you did. <laughs> yeah. But it makes such a great story. Yeah. And it makes such a great example. And I think it also gives you the ability to help so many more people, right? Because there's not much an insurance agent can go through that you didn't go through. Yeah. Right. It's so it's like, oh, yeah, I understand. Did that, too. Yeah. Right. And I can help you get through that. So I think it really equips you because I know when I was in the field, every time I had a bad day or something like to me, like I looked at it like, OK, cool. Now I know how to help someone else with that. You right. Know? And, yeah. And you That's have you, you have those tools. So I want to thank you for coming on the show. Um, is there anything else you want to you want to say to anyone before we go? Uh, no, I mean, just. You know, don't give up because I mean, I always say like, if I can do it, anyone can do it. Awesome. Yeah. Awesome. So thanks again. So again, if you, if you appreciate what Dana said, you know, subscribe, give us some comments, give us some feedback. I want to keep getting some of these gurus on here, teach you guys everything we know about insurance, give you the blueprint to success. I'm not holding anything back. I don't, I don't keep any secrets. I want everyone to be just as successful as you want to be. Thank you. Thank you. So also, if there's anything that, that you want to hear, something you want to know about, any kind of questions that you have, any kind of person you want me to get on this show, any subject, anything at all, again, this show is all about you, the, the new agent, or the agent that just hasn't found themselves yet, right? I want to, I want to help, help you out. So put anything in the comments that, that you need to know about, and I'm going to do my best to deliver that information to you.